open records request to the city of Audubon Park has revealed that former LMPD officer Kenneth Betts was hired as a sworn reserve officer here after he resigned from LMPD back in 2014. Documents show Betts started on May 18th of 2015. In a phone interview with Wave 3 News, Audubon Park Police Chief Doug Sweeney told us he first met Betts when he hired him as a health and safety officer at LMPD. He describes Betts as a self-starter and a solid employee. When interviewing him for the reserve officer position at Audubon Park, Sweeney said he asked Betts about the professional standards investigation that was noted in his file. Wave 3 News has learned Betts was accused of sending sexual text messages to a 16-year-old female explorer, although the file only noted, quote, improper contact with the girl. Betts explained it away, and Sweeney says he assumed that since LMPD closed the probe without taking action, the incident was minor. Sweeney says he never would have offered Betts a job if he had known about the sexual assault he is now charged with. Betts resigned from Audubon Park after less than six months because of commitments to another job, and we now know he later joined Rolling Hills as a code enforcement officer. We also spoke with the Kentucky Law Enforcement Council, which certifies police officers for the Commonwealth. Both Betts and Officer Brandon Wood, who was also indicted in the case last week, are listed as inactive. A council spokesperson says the only reason they would ever revoke a credential is if they were to be convicted of a felony. Reporting in Audubon Park, sharing you Wave 3 News. A representative from Campbellsville University just cited, quote, law enforcement issues as the reason why Kalia isn't happening again this year. An apparent reference to the ongoing investigation here at LMPD, whose officers led the program. You know, laugh until you cry, you know, and hard on you when you need it, and, you know, there when you also need somebody. A typical summer camp vibe, learning about law enforcement pretty awesome. I mean, like I said, there, it's people from all over the country like every year. Shauna Stansbury, a former explorer and a former advisor to the Kentucky Law Enforcement Explorer Academy, says nothing was ever strange about the week-long residential camp. We're around police officers. We felt safe. According to an online bio that was shut down this week, former officer Kenneth Betts was the assistant director at Kalia. Betts resigned in 2013 during a professional standards unit investigation and is now indicted on sexual assault charges. Sansbury was there in 2013 when Betts was working with the camp, also in 2014 when he wasn't. They told us that he could no longer be at Kalia and that he was no longer with the department and that there was a, some type of investigation going on and... Obviously, they couldn't elaborate because with an investigation, that can't happen, you know, because it could hinder it. As aspiring police officers, the explorers left it at that, understanding that an investigation meant limited information. Now, with Betts and Brandon Wood both facing sexual assault charges, the future of Kalia seems to be left uncommunicated. I was just told there was a possibility that it may not occur. We reached out to several departments around the nation that had participated in the past. The ones we heard back from had not been officially told that Kalia was canceled. An officer in charge of the Explorers in Mansfield, Ohio, says he found out through a newspaper article that it wasn't happening. Stansbury says in light of everything that has happened, the Explorers should have been told back in 2013 in depth about the PSU investigation into Betts. I guess, you know, maybe they should have in some aspects of the office, you know, there are minors there. But again, you know, we all felt safe, like none of us ever felt, you know, something that we needed to know, like right offhand of anything major because, you know, we're around police officers. We felt safe. Sansbury says she even had an explorer from her post in Bardstown who had a scholarship to attend Kylea for free this year. We have reached out to LMPD Major Curtis Flaherty, who was the director of Kylea, but he has not returned our calls. Reporting at LMPD headquarters, sharing you Wave 3 News. This is a very, very sad, sad thing that happened. It's evil that's happened in our community. David Yates is the lawyer representing the young man who says he was sexually abused by two Louisville Metro police officers during the LMPD Explorer program. You have two different police officers who has either statutorily raped or sexually abused a child. Um, and then we have a 
investigation um, in which the former um, supervisor participates in that investigation um, and nothing's brought to light. The Explorer program gives teens who are interested in becoming police officers the opportunity to learn more about law enforcement. Yates says his client, referred to in the lawsuit as NC, joined the program when he was 16 and stayed with it until he was 19. He says during that time, the then teen was sexually abused. Anytime an officer knows about a felony crime, they have a duty. And I think that we have one but two officers who abused a youth who was under their authority. Two police officers are named in the lawsuit. Both of their attorneys say they have no comment. A judge sealed the lawsuit at Yates' request. In this particular case, I think that I thought it was very important to protect um, the intimate details uh, for the victim to present to prevent any type of humiliation. Yates says keeping the case sealed protects his client. So that you can come forward and you know that your name won't be everywhere, um, that some of the things that are so private to you um, won't be further exposed and you can still seek justice for the wrongs that have happened. Now, the mayor's office says the Explorer program has been suspended temporarily, but did not say how long that suspension will last. A spokesperson from the mayor's office says that suspension takes place immediately. The Louisville Metro Police Department says they have no comment on the ongoing investigation. Reporting live, Emily Maha, WLKY News. Thanks, Emily. In a statement, the mayor says he wants the judge to unseal the lawsuit in an effort to restore the public's trust. In this program, the proceedings must be as open as the courts will allow. The mayor says the Jefferson County attorney will ask the lawsuit be unsealed while protecting the man's identity. The man's attorney says he's open to making parts of the lawsuit public. Well, new here at 5 o'clock, a call for the Metro Council president to step down now from a case against the city involving Louisville Metro Police Department's Youth Explorer program. We're talking about David Yates. He represents four victims in that lawsuit that claimed sexual abuse and a police cover-up. And now the Jefferson County attorney wants him removed from the case altogether. And WHAS 11's Anna Rivera has been following up on this story, going through these new court documents. So, Anna, tell us, what are they now revealing? Well, Doug and Renee, this has been a question since this motion was filed. Can the president of the Metro Council represent alleged victims who were suing the city? Today, the county attorney spelled out his case on why he should be taken off that case. The motion includes a conversation that allegedly happened over Facebook Messenger between Yates and one of the people he now represents in the case. In the conversation that, according to the filing, happened in October of last year, Yates offered his legal representation, noting his, quote, unique position as a reason why Yates should be hired to take the case. The motion also includes a law professor as an expert opinion that says Yates' position as council president is a conflict of interest. Now, we have reached out to Yates for Comment, but he has not responded. In the past, he's told WHS 11 News that he received approval from the Bar Association, who told him he could legally and ethically represent the victims. Anna Rivera, WHS 11 News. And just today, another former youth explorer has come forward claiming sexual abuse by two former Louisville Metro police officers. This comes after a judge has ruled today to remove the plaintiff's lead attorney on the case. In this ruling, the judge says attorney and Metro Council President David Yates has a conflict of interest with his case due to his role on the Metro Council. 11 and 11's Anna Rivera has been following the story and here's what the judge ruled. Anna? That's right, Doug. The Explorer case will move forward, but without David Yates. Yates says five alleged victims came to him confident that he could help them get their stories out about sex abuse in Louisville Metro's Explorer program. Now his co-counsel will have to get the job done. A new year and a new attorney. We're looking forward to getting to the truth. In March 2017, attorney David Yates filed the first of five lawsuits claiming former youth explorers had been sexually abused by two former Louisville Metro officers, Kenneth Betts and Brandon Wood. I was presented an opportunity um, to help a victim of child sex abuse. It turned out to be several victims and that opportunity opened up into the the ability to expose what I saw as a terrible wrong in our community. But some believe Yates' position as Metro Council president was a conflict of interest. Don't you try to get money. You made a $6 million demand on Metro government to settle this case. Which I you wanted the argument. money. This hearing in September led to a ruling from Judge Judith McDonald Berkman, removing Yates as the lead attorney. Attorney Tad Thomas, who was serving as the co-counsel on this case, will now step up. 
do you feel prepared to take over as lead counsel at this, this point? Oh, absolutely. I've handled, uh, unfortunately, many cases of this nature. Jefferson County Attorney Mike O'Connell said in a statement that the judge's decision should instill confidence that our elected officials owe a higher duty to the people's government than to their own personal gain. With this decision, the case can move forward, and Thomas says each of their five clients are ready for justice. Over the last several months, we had prepared them for that possibility, and so they understand and they're prepared to move forward as well. About five different officers or former officers have been named in these lawsuits, either accused of sexual abuse or their involvement in alleged cover-up. That includes Chief Steve Conrad. Anna Rivera, 11 at 11. Well, Vicki, it's worth pointing out much of that report, as you can see here, was redacted in an effort to maintain the privacy of these young victims. But there are several instances that detail disturbing instances of abuse. Yeah, even with that, the investigators behind that report feel those instances are more in line with a series of poor choices, mistakes, and flawed judgment, not a cover-up. It's the conclusion reinforced multiple times throughout these 90 pages. LMPD did not engage in an effort to cover up misconduct in the Explorer program. However, that conclusion does not imply that these matters have been handled without error. To the contrary, the report says, we conclude that there have been violations of policy and mistakes in judgment, some significant. Metro Council President David James. If, if there were mistakes made, uh, then those are mistakes and then maybe there's something that needs to take place. If there were intentional acts that took place, which we cannot determine yet because we haven't read it yet, um, then that's a whole different story. Much of those cited mistakes and judgments are directed at decisions made about Officer Kenneth Betts. Betts was indicted by a Jefferson County grand jury in connection with sex abuse allegations from former participants in the department's Youth Explorer program. After an internal investigation, members of the LMPD command staff offered opinions to Chief Conrad on what should happen to Betts. All agreed that Betts had committed a serious act of misconduct and should be separated from the LMPD. Instead, after it was learned he had an illness, which according to the report, the nature of that illness was never independently verified, he continued working in the department on desk duty, maintaining his health benefits. He later resigned. That resignation allowed him to continue working in law enforcement at another police department. The report also references a disc with nude photos of one of the teenage victims. That disc was destroyed by an investigating officer who said it lacked evidentiary value. The parents of that teen were never informed of its existence. The report says the judgment of that investigating officer was flawed. Despite the findings, Metro Councilwomen Angela Leet and Jessica Green have lost faith in the now suspended Explorer program. As a parent, I think that it, it just hits you in the gut when you read these kind of allegations. So, no, unequivocally, I would not send my baby. I would not either. I think when you put on your mom's uh, lenses for this, I think we, uh, as women, tend to have a different reaction. And in fairness to the members of the Metro Council there, uh, when we spoke to them, uh, they had only recently received the report and had not had a chance to fully review it. The Public Safety Committee will review that full report at a meeting next month. And Eric, you've gone through it too. This report is extremely hard to read. Kids as young as 16 who wanted a career in law enforcement now saying they were preyed on by those they trusted. Sleepovers, sexual favors, including oral sex for an LMPD ride-along. A teen claiming an officer crawled into bed with him while attending an out-of-state conference. It's just some of what's contained in this 90-page report, detailing allegations of abuse and how those allegations were handled. The first indication there's anything wrong comes to light July 20th, 2013. A female explorer identified as Explore One confides to another officer she's getting phone calls and inappropriate texts from then officer Kenny Betts. Betts admits to an error in my judgment and resigns from the program two days later. In the weeks ahead, an investigation uncovers more stories of abuse. Explore 2 says at age 18, he received a speeding ticket in Boone County and says Betts offered to take care of it in exchange for sex. He also alleges Betts repeatedly offered him money for sex, but Explore 2 maintains the pair never had a sexual relationship. Betts, the report details, invited multiple explorers to his home. Two said they went there to watch TV but ended up engaging in oral sex. Another showed up for a ride-along and said Betts forced him to leave when he wouldn't agree to sex. Another explorer claims Betts crawled into bed with him at a conference in Colorado and touched him inappropriately. Betts, who resigned in 2014, 
was the only officer in question until allegations were made against Officer Brandon Wood in July 2016. One explorer, it's alleged, was texted a video of Wood having sex with another man. Then, according to the report, there were suggestive messages Wood sent to another young man and two explorers claiming to have had sex with Wood. One explorer said of Wood he was scared of what he would do and left the program because of him. Betts has quit the force. Wood, meanwhile, was fired in April 2017, but at last check, he was appealing. Now, we know right now there are at least six pending lawsuits claiming explorers were sexually abused and the abuse was covered up at the hands of officials. I'm Lauren Adams, WLKY News. But we begin with more troubling information in the ongoing Youth Explorer program with Metro Police. Good afternoon, I'm Rachel Platt. One of the officers accused of sexually assaulting juveniles in the program was accused of sexual misconduct when he was a scout in that same program years before. Our Heather Fountaine has been working this story all day and Heather, more questions today, right? Certainly, Rachel, a timeline of events and accusations released last night by Metro Council suggested members of the police department knew about sexual misconduct in the Explorer program as early as 2002. It has some city leaders anxious to see if the current FBI investigation will hold more people responsible for years of abuse. Accused of sexually abusing eight teens in the Explorer program between 2007 and 2013, we're learning former LMPD officer Kenneth Betts may have shown signs of similar behavior as early as 2002, when he was a minor and a scout in the Explorer program. This timeline released Thursday night by the Louisville Metro Council shows a minor, whose name was redacted, was accused of allegations of sexual misconduct by two females. Sources have confirmed that minor was Betts. So the new timeline takes any alleged issues with Betts way back to 2002, long before he was accused while a police officer in 2013. Metro Council President David James will not talk about any redacted information, but responded to our questions about sexual misconduct in general with the Explorer program. And, and so in 2013, when it, when it actually occurred, knowing what happened in 2002, the police department should have definitely said, let's stop the program. Let's talk to every single child that's been involved in the program. Let's find out if anything inappropriate has happened with them or attempted to happen with them, and let's hold some people accountable. That did not occur, and because that did not occur, more children were molested. The timeline reports that Lieutenant Curtis Flaherty, who later became a major and oversaw the Explorer program for many years, submitted a report about the allegations, but does not specify what came of it or if there was an investigation. James hoping the ongoing FBI investigation will lead to more answers. I'm very confident the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, will come through with charges um, uh, for those that should be held responsible. And I think that through the civil case that we will also learn more. And this very important conversation will continue in the council chambers at the next Public Safety Committee hearing where former U.S. Attorney Kerry Harvey is expected to address questions on this newly released timeline. I'm Heather Fountaine, WHAS 11 News. A grand jury met this morning and this afternoon a judge read their decisions in the courtroom shortly after that Metro Council members who are part of the Committee on Contracts and Appointments voted to allow former U.S. Attorney Kerry Harvey to do an independent investigation into these allegations. Now the full council is expected to vote on that tomorrow. Brandon Wood and Kenneth Betts are both accused of sexually assaulting minors involved in LMPD's Youth Explorer program. Woods' indictment is on seven counts of sexual abuse involving a minor between 2011 and 2012. Betts' indictment is for two counts of sodomy and involves two victims. One of the allegations is said to have happened in 2007, the other in 2012. The Commonwealth's attorney was told about the allegations in October of last year, and LMPD's Public Integrity Unit sent him its preliminary findings in February, and he calls it a thorough investigation. Metro Council members say they're anxious to get answers. You know, I think it's a, a very serious matter. It's a heartbreaking matter that uh, we have before our city. Um, I'm glad to see that um, the legal process has taken place and that um, the indictments have been uh, handed down from the grand jury and that now the Commonwealth attorney will be able to start his prosecution. When you guys, I mean, because what has become apparent to me 
um, over the last several months is that we can't get straight answers. And we have to keep asking questions and asking questions and peel off one layer at a time just to seem to get to another partial truth. And what I want to get to is the real truth. A man in his 20s filed a lawsuit last month claiming Betts and Wood sexually abused him while he was in the Youth Explorer program. Since then, we're told at least three other people have come forward saying they are also victims. The Explorer program was suspended after the claims were made public. The judge set the bond for both men today. Betts' bond is $15,000. The bond for Wood is $10,000. The judge said that both men she considers to be a danger to the community. We are told that Wood has already turned himself in. As for Betts, his attorney tells me that his client will turn himself in in a timely manner. Both attorneys for both men tell me that their clients maintain their innocence and they are ready and anxious to have their day in court. Both are are expected to be in court Monday. Reporting at police headquarters, Carolyn Callahan, WLKY News. There are dozens of commendation letters in former LMPD officer Kevin Betts's file. Everything from praise for assisting with arrests to his involvement with the Louisville Metro Police Department's Explorer program. Betts was indicted on Wednesday. He's facing two counts of sodomy with two different victims during two different times. The first allegations of abuse happening in 2007. The second allegations happening five years later in the summer of 2012. We were made aware the day before that an indictment was going to be presented to the grand jury. Uh, so we anticipated you know, the fact that they were presenting an indictment to the grand jury that he would be indicted. In court on Wednesday, the Commonwealth said Betts used his position of power as an officer involved with the LMPD Youth Explorer program to take advantage of victims. According to documents in his personnel file, Betts was nominated for the department's Exceptional Merit Award two years in a row for his work with the Explorer program. The Explorer program gives teens interested in law enforcement the opportunity to work with police. Before joining the LMPD, documents show Betts had been an explorer. He resigned from the police department in 2014 in the midst of an internal investigation into allegations that he had inappropriate contact with a female explorer. His lawyer says he'll be arraigned on Monday. With a felony charge, and these are felony charges, uh, anyone charged with a felony is required to appear at every court appearance. Former officer Brandon Wood has several letters of praise in his file. Documents also show he was suspended three times for violating police policy, including a violation of the department's use of deadly force policy. A professional standards investigation says Woods shot at the back of a stolen vehicle that was driving away from him. He served a nine-day suspension. Wood was indicted on Wednesday for seven counts of sexual abuse involving a minor over a five-month period between 2011 and 2012. The abuse allegedly occurred while Wood was involved with the police department's Explorer program. Chief Steve Conrad began the process of firing Brandon Wood yesterday. He was fired effective immediately today. Emily Maha, WLKY News.